Hi, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Emmy Inohado. I am a 2021 graduate from Boston University, and I decided to make this channel so I can document and share my journey as I navigate the post-grad world and also UX and product design job applications. Woo! I am by no means a design expert or life expert by that manner. But uh, subscribe if you want to follow along as I go on this ride. And if you want to learn more about design with me and also hear some of my productivity and career tips. For my channel's first video, I thought it would be cool to share my personal UX design journey, how I discovered it and how I decided to pursue it as a career. And hopefully this video helps some people out, whether you are in college currently, confused about which major to pick and thinking about different careers, or if you are already a professional and thinking about switching into UX. Just a warning, my story is kind of a long one, so it might go like all over the place, but I'll try my best to be as comprehensive and understandable as possible. So without further ado, grab your coffee or your water. I am personally trying to hydrate more because I don't always do the best job at that. So grab your coffee or your water and let's dive in. A little bit of background, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas, yay age town, and I was always a pretty creative child. I always immerse myself in hobbies like drawing and art, reading, writing. For a while, I dabbled into architecture a bit too. So I was like a second, third grader, and I was making all these different architectural plans on those blueprint papers for dream houses and dream schools. However, I was also really curious in the human brain which is a really odd interest as a little child. But I would read neuroscience, like those neuroscience for kids books, brain for kids books that DK would publish. And for the longest time, like elementary to high school, those were my two main interests career-wise, architecture or neuroscience research. Whenever I got into high school towards the end of my ninth grade year, I received an invitation to apply for my stu school student run newspaper. And nowhere in my four year plan that I created whenever I was a high schooler was newspaper. I didn't like even think about it until I got that application, but I ended up applying on a whim and I got in and joining newspaper was seriously the best decision I could have ever made as a high schooler or even in my life. I don't think I would be where I am without joining newspaper. Because of newspaper, I was introduced to the world of design in a way from like at a relatively young age. I was very involved with editorial layout in addition to like regular newspaper writing and reporting. So I learned all about InDesign, um, typography, design hierarchy, layout, all of that stuff. And whenever I was in 12th grade and I was, I was deciding on all these different colleges, very exciting time. I was going through and I decided to apply to most colleges as a neuroscience major. I figured that if I wanted to pick up journalism or something along those lines, I could add it on later whenever I got into college as a double major or as a minor. I ended up deciding on Boston University, big surprise, because I mentioned in the earlier video, <laughs> but I ended up deciding on Boston University and I entered as a neuroscience major. And that first semester, I really loved my classes. I adored the friends that I made in those classes, but I quickly found out that neuroscience potentially could not be something that I pursue. I remember we went to this undergraduate research symposium that BU hosts where undergraduate students share their research um, that they've been doing. And I saw all my neuroscience friends get really excited and passionate about 
all these like great findings and research that these students were doing. And I like was thinking to myself, like I could not do this for the rest of my life or even like right now going into lab and doing research. And I wanted something that I was like passionate about. Like I saw the way that my friends like really lit up whenever talking about neuroscience and research. And I wanted to find something that also made me light up like that. So I did a little bit of self-reflecting and I was investigating some more careers in the creative sector. I thought about advertising and I also thought about switching into the advertising major at BU. And I also found scientific and medical illustration. And I thought that was like a really great like career potential, potentially for me, because it combined both science, which I love to learn about and also illustration and using that creative side. And I actually got a medical illustration internship for my sophomore year. So I was able to explore that further. And I also decided my sophomore year to switch into BU's graphic design major. So my sophomore year fall semester, I had enrolled in a graphic design studio course, a painting, drawing, and I also decided to take a neuroscience course to keep that science curriculum going. <laughs> I chose the hardest neuroscience course at BU to take just for funsies. I don't really know why I did that looking back, but you live some, you learn some. <laughs> And during this medical illustration internship, I really enjoyed it. It was relaxing. I was basically on my iPad during my shifts, drawing up um, what the physicians told me to draw. And I was collaborating with them a lot. So it was a really great professional experience. And at the same time, I was taking the graphic design courses. And I also realized that it was more of a traditional graphic design degree than a like digital design, if that makes sense. So like the professors were great. All of them have really great design knowledge and like design experience. But I was again thinking about switching my majors. It's kind of like an internal joke in my friend group about how I switched my majors like five times, but it happens. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. So I was thinking, I ended up switching back to biology actually, because I figured that I could major in biology. And if I wanted to pursue scientific illustration down the line, if I wanted to apply to a master's degree program for that, I needed all these biology courses. So I was like, might as well do a major in it and drop the graphic design so I can focus more on the classes because they'd be really hard and also focus on design myself. Then in the November month of my sophomore year, I spontaneously signed up for an Adobe Creative Jam competition. And this was like my breaking point in a way, because it was the first time that I really learned about UX design. Whenever I signed up, um, Adobe professionals like came to the school and they gave us like a crash course workshop on Adobe XD and what exactly is UX design. And let me tell you, like during the competition, I felt so alive. Like we were working in a time crunch. I think it was three hours. We had to design and prototype an app on Adobe XD that solved this really crucial problem, which was like, I think it was the voting election. Like how do we encourage college students to vote? And I was just like really like, thrilled the whole time. Like I felt like, my heart racing and I was doing something that I loved. I was using my creativity, but also thinking critically about a problem and what the best course of action was. And after this competition, I was just so shocked because like, how had I never heard of UX design before, like product design before? Because it's literally everything that I wanted in a career. It combines using my creativity and the design also human behavior, because you also have to be able to empathize with the users and understand the problem to solve it. Um, there was also technology and business, innovation. It was 
just so mind-blowing for me that there was a career UX design out there. And winter break of my sophomore year all the way to the summer between my sophomore and junior year is what I consider like the learning about UX design point of my life. I watch a whole lot of YouTube videos on what exactly UX design was. I also read a lot of articles on Medium about UX design, read a lot of case studies, and also went ahead and downloaded or explored more in Adobe XD, Sketch, and Vision as well. So during that about eight month period, I did a lot of self-learning outside of class on my own time to figure out what UX design was, decide if it's really something that I was interested in pursuing actually as a career. And I, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I did a lot of like self-initiated case studies. So, or like projects. So I give like myself a prompt and a solution I'd solve for and build out and prototype the app in like Adobe XD. This was also a point in time where it was kind of confusing for me as a college student, just navigating what to do if the college or my college didn't offer curriculum for the career that I wanted. I considered transferring to Savannah College of Art and Design or SCAD as some people may know, and because it's a really amazing UX design school and I like applied for transfer, but I ended up not taking it because it would have been like full price tuition. So that would have been a bit rough. And yeah, so that was just like a very confusing point in my life because I had to sort of make do with my own self learning and what opportunities were available for me at college already as well. Luckily, I wasn't alone. I actually got to talk to a few BU alum who were product or UX designers already, like they're professionals. And since BU didn't have like a UX design degree, a lot of them mentioned that they had a degree that like had nothing to do with what they are currently doing. Like one had an economics degree, another had like an engineering degree. So just like for those out there who are in college and thinking about UX, know that you don't have to have a UX degree or like a design related degree to go into the field. So that provided a little bit of comfort as for me as a college student. It was a bit hard at times, of course, going through courses that didn't directly relate to my major. Oh yeah, I think I forgot to mention. So I was a biology major, spring semester of my sophomore year. And then I decided to switch back to neuroscience my junior year, just because I had already had some course credits for it. And um, spoiler alert, I ended, up, I ended up graduating with a degree in psychology. And that's where I am now. But what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's okay if you don't have a design degree. There's, if there's a will, there's a way. You might have to forge your own path. But in the end, um, I think what makes UX design such a really interesting field is that UX designers come from all different paths in life and they bring all their education to the table as well. So one person might have psychology background to really empathize with users and think about the ways that human behavior could impact products and how products could impact human behavior. And someone else might have a journalism degree and they can bring those skills whenever interviewing users. So your education is valued whenever you go into UX design. And then I entered junior year. Junior year of college is when I think a lot of things kicked off for me design-wise and career-wise. I was involved in a lot of different things, so forging your own path, um, speaking of that, I created a design club community on BU's campus because before that, I realized that there was no central place for BU students to learn about design in a casual way. 
and I wanted to make it more accessible if people were interested in pursuing UX design or design in general as a career and bridge that gap between students and the design industry. So um, along with some other really great people, we founded a club called Design Club, and then it eventually rebranded as Forge Design Studios. So I was really involved with getting that started and bringing the design community and building it at BU. And also I participated in a lot of hackathons and designathons that year too. So that's another recommendation for people, um, join hackathons, join designathons because you really get that firsthand experience for designing and collaborating with others. And you can also use it on your portfolio. And what else did I do? I was a UX design fellow for BU Spark at my spring semester of junior year. And BU Spark is basically BU's innovation middle incubator for CS students and those interested in leveraging technology for an innovation project. So as a UX design fellow, I was paired up with three other CS students and we, for the semester, we worked together to solve for an innovation problem. And our project, we ended up building a website for LGBTQ plus students in the Boston area and helped them access LGBTQ plus friendly resources for mental health and etc. During junior year, I was also in the process of applying for UX design internships for like that next summer. And this was also like a real, it was basically a part-time job. Like anyone who's gone through the internship process for any industry probably knows that. But applying for internships and interviewing for them too, I think I applied for about 50, I want to say, like 50 to 70 maybe. And I heard back from like six, maybe. <laughs> but I ended up going pretty far in the interview processes for some like big tech companies, which was really surprising for me because I still consider myself like a very like new designer. I got into the final rounds for slalom builds. Amazon and Google. And unfortunately, none of them kind of like worked out. Google's UX design internship for 2020 was actually canceled due to COVID-19. So RIP to that. But it was a really great like learning experience for me going through the internship application process and knowing how good like my portfolio needed to be, how to prep for those interviews and what to expect too. Whenever COVID happened, a lot of the internship and plans that I had for internships for summer 2020 fell through, which was pretty disappointing, but I was also able to work on some really amazing projects last summer. Um, so it ended up working out in the end. I was a UX designer for this startup project called Circle. We, from April to October 2020, we built an app that aimed at simplifying the social scheduling process and I was able to collaborate with actual product managers and developers on that. I was also a digital media manager and the designer for Tech Together Boston, which Tech Together is this really amazing nonprofit organization that sets up um, female and non-binary hackathons like all around the US. And I was also doing really amazing things with Forge Design Studios. Forge Design Studios launched Forge Labs in summer 2020. And Forge Labs is the internship and apprenticeship program where we connected students with client-based design projects. And it was so cool to see because in summer and fall combined, we co consulted with 11 different clients and about 30 interns slash apprentices and we built out the whole curriculum we had weekly sort of like educational modules into it where we gave workshops on ux design building a portfolio etc and it was also really amazing because our clients were from like all different states from all over um, the U.S. I think there were four states total that were represented and they were all in different industries too. So like education, 
um, like agriculture, I think like fashion and startups, small businesses and nonprofits. We were also able to give back to the community and do what we can by offering pro bono services to BIPOC um, founders and business owners as well. So junior year, also been to senior year, is definitely the time where I was able to gather all of like, the knowledge that I self-learned myself that like sophomore, junior year-ish and put it into action. And although there were like, relatively like small projects, um, like startups and internships, it was still definitely a really great experience. I learned so much about what it's like to actually collaborate with other people, what it's like to manage projects. And also that was what I learned about Figma too, because there is that whole shift to online and like digital learning and everyone went back home and worked from offices. And before, I think it was like before February or March, 2020, I hadn't even heard of Figma. And I ended up finding out about it because we needed something that was more collaborative in one of my teams and Figma was perfect. So look at Figma if you haven't already. Senior year, I was really focused and engaged with Forge, building that out. We were still doing a lot of workshops and we also put together our first nationwide designathon this past year, which was also so amazing to see we had I think it was about 500 plus registrants and we had about 150 students actually attend the event and it was so great to see what people could do from like just two nights or like 20 something hours I, I can't do math <laughs> it was so inspiring to see what they could do in such a small amount of time and it was really cool to see students from all over the country as well. We also partnered with ADP List, which is, I'll talk about it later, but ADP List mentors come in, came in and virtually came in and gave workshops on all these different design topics. For me personally, I've been on the job hunt since about January on and off. Something that I wish I knew earlier is that a lot of new grad UX and product design positions open up in like early fall, sometimes as early as August and then like ends maybe in November. And I guess like for me personally, that wasn't the best time to be applying for things just because there is so much going on in like work and school and personal life and also the world was just very chaotic this past year so I didn't really end up applying for like new grad positions but I started my job application search in January and have been on and off because again life gets in the way and I'm dedicating my time more fully now since I'm out of college to the actual job search. I've gotten interviews for a few different places, um, some in Boston, some in Seattle, Bay Area, but I um, usually end around the portfolio review section. So update, upgrading my portfolio is something that I'm also currently working on. I've gotten some really great advice from some professionals. So I'm excited to be implementing that in this next week. That's my current plan. Tips and things that I wish I knew earlier as a student navigating UX design and self-teaching themselves too. One, if you are interested in UX design, learn the design fundamentals and research and read about design. So for me personally, like I mentioned, this took about, this stage took about eight months. Um, read a lot of articles that you can find, uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'll definitely link in the comments some resources that helped me along the way. But learning your design fundamentals really sets you up for a good foundation whenever you actually go in and start using Figma, Adobe XD, whichever your prototyping tool of choice is. Two, sign up for hackathons and designathons. Like I had mentioned, Hackathons and designathons are such great opportunities to 
work in a very like fast paced environment and with other people because you can do all these like self initiated projects which are amazing too self case studies, but in hackathons and designathons you're most likely working with at least like two other people, so you can experience that collaborative environment working under design working under pressure and also working to solve a problem. And you can definitely use these projects in your portfolios as well. Don't underestimate them. I know my hackathon project that I used my junior year rode me through like the final round and two final round interviews. So just make sure whenever you're putting in these hackathon projects or any projects in your portfolio, make sure that they are very detailed and you are able to show your design thinking process, articulate your design decisions from start to finish. Don't just show the final product, all like the flashy um, prototypes or the screens. Something that really differentiates UX and product design from graphic design is all the work that goes before you get to the final product. So don't be afraid to put in like the problem, put in the research that you did, um, show all your sketches, all your crazy sticky notes about what ended up turning into that final product and that flashy, the flashy screens. And if you are serious about applying for UX positions, you need to have a really great portfolio. So make sure you are setting that up before you apply for jobs. And you can do it on Adobe Portfolio. I know I did that because it was included in my student plan um, for free. So look into Adobe Portfolio if you are a student and your school offers it for free. You can also code your own site. Um, that takes some time though. You can use like Squarespace. Webflow is another platform that I've heard really great things about. If you're confused about where to start and how to actually create a portfolio or what it should look like, I recommend this website called cofolios.com. I'll link it down below, but it's this really great resource because it features portfolios um, by students and they're students who have landed amazing internships at like big tech companies and etc. And it's really great inspiration because they are students. And so if you're a student, looking at these UX portfolios could serve as really great reference. Last but not least, number three, reach out to people. I know I personally went through so many different coffee chats and informational interviews whenever I was figuring out if UX design was something I actually wanted to pursue. I was able to connect with some BU alum, so if you one thing at the how to, you can go on LinkedIn, type in your university name, go to alumni, and then type in like UX designer, product designer, and all the BU alumni or like your college alumni will appear. And if they have like UX designer in the title, they'll show up. And I basically cold messaged them. And so huge thanks to those who actually responded to me. Like, and I asked to set up like a quick, like 15, 30 minute phone call or Zoom hang out with them and they were really so amazing to give take the time and give me advice and talk through what they actually do as a designer and how to get there as well. Another way to get informational interviews without going through LinkedIn and cold messaging people is adplist.org. ADPlist, like I mentioned, in the past, <laughs> ADPlist is this amazing directory of all designers like from all around the world, actually, who actually want to mentor young designers and people interested in design. So you can go in on the website and type in any keyword. If you're really interested in a certain company, you can type that in any country, and you can also filter it based on what you want to get out of a coffee chat. So if you are looking to get informational um, and just information on UX design, you can filter by that. If you're looking to get a portfolio review, if you're looking to get um, like advice on how to interview, you can do that as well. 
So that is my UX design journey in a nutshell, plus tips and things I wish I knew earlier. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope this is helpful. And I, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments or connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever platform, and I'll be happy to answer them as well. It's great to connect and meet people who are also in the same journey as I am. So definitely do that. Um, thank you all for tuning in and watching. I hope you all have a great day. And that's it for me. Bye.